Hello everyone, welcome to techtoo.com. In this lecture, we will be understanding correlated nested queries or subquery. So the subquery we already know that we have a query inside a query, right? So for example, we have select attribute one, attribute two from R1, where attribute three in some inner query select attribute three from something like this, right? So here this is inner query, okay, and this is outer query. Fine. This is outer and this is inner query, right? Now, in this case or the query which we have learned till now, the inner query executes only once, right? So the first inner query is executed and the values or the tuples are found out. Then the outer query is executed and we check the condition, right? So this inner query will execute only once, right? But in case of correlated nested query, which we are going to study now, this is the basic difference that the inner query will execute more than once. That is for each time the outer query is executed, inner query will also execute. Okay. So this is the main difference. This difference comes because of a simple reason that in case of correlated nested query, inner query uses some value from outer query. Let's see an example and we will understand it. So consider the query where we have to list down all the employees whose salary is greater than average of their department, right? So let's say we have a relation employee and we have attribute EID, name, salary and department. Now we have to list down all the employees whose salary is greater than average of the salary of the particular department. So now understand this. Let's say we have a database instance where we have four records in this employee table and you can see that the employees basically belong to only two departments that is CSE and EC, right? And as per the query, we have to list down only those employees detail whose salary is greater than average of the salary from that department, right? So let's say when I'm taking this first record, that is the record with this value EID1 name A, salary 2K and CSE department. So in this case, I have to compare that this 2K salary is greater than the average salary of CSE. So we also have to compute that the average, what is the average salary of branch CSE, right? So each time when I am concentrating on a record to, uh, to see whether I have to select this or not, I have to compute this average salary, right? So see the workflow. First of all, I'll go to this record. Okay, I'll see what is the department CSE. Then I need to find out what is the average salary of CSE, right? Because we don't have any storing mechanism in SQL, right? Data will not be computed and stored. So if you have to compare the value for more than one department, okay? So every time you have to calculate the average salary of the department, okay? So I'll go to the record, I'll see what is the department, then I'll calculate the average salary of the department CSE, okay? So we have to and so it will be 2.5 K right now I will compare whether this salary is greater than 2.5 K or not okay so if it is yes we will select so as it is not we will not select it now next record we will see what is the department again we will calculate the average of EC average salary so now I have 3.5 K so I'll check whether it is greater than 3.5 K if it is then we will select add as 3k is not greater than 3.5k we will not select it okay so similar way we will proceed so every time for each record we have to calculate this average value right so we will write query like this select eid name from employee right from employee as e okay so the record we will take as e now where salary is greater than now for this Let's say first record. I'm taking first record. Okay. So select EID and name. 
I'll just select EID and name okay and then this record I'll treat as E okay and then where salary is greater than so now I need to calculate the average salary of the CSE so you can see select average salary okay from employee where department equal to E dot department right so as I said I'll go to this record I'll select these two attributes as I have to list down these two attributes now I'll check what is the department of this record and I'll calculate first the average salary of this department so that's what we are doing here select average salary of em from employee where department equal to e dot department that is this records department that is CSE okay so this will calculate average salary now you can see that this e and this e we are using this same value in inner inner query here and here outer query so in inner query we are using value from outer query and that's why that's how you can recognize correlated query at your first glance so this will perform uh, the required thing and it will basically give us the employee whose salary is greater than average salary of the department okay now let's understand how correlated query performs of course correlated query is a power of SQL but it's not always good to use okay sometimes it may not perform well so what are the cases basically uh, it performs well in two cases so the first one is that your uh, outer query has less number of records that is outer query returns true for less number of records or second is your inner query returns true for less number of records so let's write it down <coughs> okay so correlated query or correlated subquery performs better if only a few records are retrieved by outer query okay or inner query returns only a small records that is in both the case so either outer query should return a less number of records or inner query should return less number of records so in that case correlated subquery performs better otherwise views or joins will be a better choice okay because apart from these two cases views or join will have better efficiency fine so i hope you understand correlated query better now in the next lecture we will learn exist function so if you have any doubt please go to doubt section on tech2.com and ask your doubt see you in the next lecture thanks for watching